Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is May 11th, 2023, and we are in the Old Testament, and we're in the book of Numbers. We're going to read chapter 10, verse 11 to 36. All right, so what's going to happen? Hey, it's the big day. They're getting ready to leave Mount Sinai. Uh, two years in the making. Two years of commandments and, and, and being instructed to build things and, and build the tent of the tabernacle and build all the utensils and how are they going to carry them and, and this and that. Again, two years of preparation and now it's come down to the cloud is getting ready to lift and move. They're going to break camp and they're going to start their wanderings. There's one little section in here that, uh, that probably needs to be called out. We're going to get to a point where they talk about Moses talking to Hobab, the son of Raul the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law. Wait a minute. Didn't we already see Je his father-in-law and wasn't his name Jethro? All right. Yep. And and I guess the best explanation is for it is, is Ruel and Jethro is probably just two names for the same person because we see that all the way through here that people a lot of times have two names. A little stickier is, is that name Hobab because the son of his father-in-law would be his brother-in-law. Somewhere down the line when we get into Judges, we're going to see him again. And then he's called the father-in-law. And it's like, okay, that's a little bit harder to explain. What we would should really keep in mind is, is if we were the original audience for this, reading this in the original Hebrew, which was our original language, it would make perfect sense to us. That's that Bible inerrancy doctrine. Why is it different for us now? Probably what happened in the original Hebrew, they don't have vowels. So the original Hebrew word for brother-in-law without vowels and the original Hebrew word for father-in-law without vowels is identical. So somewhere along the line, we probably, someone shifted something and, and lost track of something. And that's why we probably get these two different names. Now, what does that have to do with anything in the Bible? Well, good news, not a whole lot. doesn't really matter if it's the brother-in-law or the father-in-law. Basically, what we want to see is, is Jethro, his father-in-law's people. Well, they helped him out a little bit, but when it came time to, to continue on, they said, you know what, we're going to go back home. Good luck. Our, our, our future is not with your future. And they go their separate ways. So, Again, don't get too hung up on it. Yes, it's a little bit of a discrepancy, but you know what? It's not anything that breaks anything in your Bible. So let's go ahead and we're going to read Numbers chapter 10, verse 11 to 36. Now it came to pass on the 20th day of the second month in the second year that the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle of the testimony. And the children of Israel set out from the wilderness of Sinai on their journeys. Then the cloud settled down in the wilderness of Paran. So they started out for the first time according to the command of the Lord by the hand of Moses. The standard of the camp of the children of Judah set out first according to their armies. Over their army was Nashan, the son of Amminadab. Over the army of the tribe of the children of Issachar was Nathaniel, the son of Zuar. And over the army of the tribe of the children of Zebulon was Eliab, the son of Hilion. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the sons of Gershon and the sons of Merari set out carrying the tabernacle. And the standard of the camp of Reuben set out according to their armies. Over their army was Elazur, the son of Shadur. Over the army of the tribe of the children of Simeon was Shalumiel, the son of Zerushaddai. And over the army of the tribe of the children of Gad was Elisaph, the son of Duel. Then the Kohathites set out carrying the holy things. The tabernacle would be prepared for their arrival. And the standard of the camp of the children of Ephraim set out according to their armies. Over their army was Elishama, the son of Amihub. Over the army of the tribe of the children of Manasseh was Gamaliel, the son of Pedazur. And over the army of the tribe of the children of Benjamin was Abaddon, the son of Gideone. Then the standard of the camp of the children of Dan, the rear guard of all the camps, set out according to their armies. Over their army was Ahiazar, the son of Mishadai. Over the army of the tribe of the children of Asher was Pajil, the son of Okron. And over the army of the tribe of the children of Nathala was Ahira, the son of Enon. Thus was the order of march of the children of Israel according to their armies when they began their journey. Now Moses said to Hobab, the son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, We are setting out for the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will treat you well, for the Lord has promised good things to Israel. And he said to him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my relatives. So Moses said, 
Please do not leave, inasmuch as you know how we are to camp in the wilderness, and you can be our eyes. And it shall be, if you go with us, indeed it shall be, that whatever good the Lord will do to us, the same we will do to you. So they departed from the mountain of the Lord on a journey of three days, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them for the three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was above them by day when they went out from the camp. So it was, whenever the ark set out, that Moses said, Rise up, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, to the many thousands of Israel. May God bless the reading of his word. May God bless you. Bye.